the, the hips will drop, but at the same time they will grip a little. So we have more connection between the two femur heads and also the chest can lift, the connection between the sitting bones and the top of the chest is one of sucking up and then roll the shoulders back and down, lengthen the sides of the body, close your eyes. Just take a moment there to settle, feel <coughs> the heartbreak um, just underneath your sitting bones and push the brick. So we have just sat on the sharpest edge of the brick currently. Lift the chest. Relax the throat. Relax the tongue in your mouth. Relax the gaze, the flesh of the cheeks and extend the crown of the head up to the sky. Then feel the shoulders, the shoulder tips, and take them back. And then visualize that wall behind you and lean on that wall without going backwards. Lean on that wall and extend the head up, the neck, the back of the neck goes to the wall, the two shoulder tips, the waist and the buttocks. And then bend your elbows and bring your hands together in front of you. And take the back of your upper arms to that imaginary wall. Feel that wall and feel the support of that wall and grow the spine taller from there. So sitting bones pushing onto the brick and then lift one vertebra at a time all the way up to the sky. Take a deeper inhalation than before and let's all release and chant. because otherwise when I stand up Actually on platforms 
and lift the arches of the feet, so from the arches of the feet all the way to the inner knees, inner groins, etc. But also from the outer hips back and down. So the outer heels and the outer arches of the feet really push onto the bricks. Extend the toes so they are not scratching up. If you have longer feet than the bricks themselves, just let the toes hang back. The neck of the toes will be flat on the bricks as well. Lift the knees, lift the thighs and press the thighs back. Lengthen the tailbone down, lift the chest and extend the arms by your sides. And then again have that feeling of closing your eyes and imagining there is a wall behind you where the whole extension of the back of the arm will be touching on that wall and the back of the neck, the back of the head. And as you are there, feel that you are evenly pressing with the two feet. So there is no micro movement. There's no action of shifting the hips from one end to the other, from one brick to the other. We are stable and not allowed to move. So send that command to your brain or from the brain to the body. Do not move. Do not shift the balance or or move, changing the point of gravity. Lift the chest, be in the middle. And now, open your eyes and bring the two bricks together, so the two feet will be together. And big toe mounts, in the heels, Squeeze the outer thighs in, outer shins in, and then do the same action. Send the weight back to the imaginary wall, lift from the pubic bone all the way up, open the arms, attach those two shoulders and the little finger edge side of the hands to the imaginary wall, and now lift your toes, lift the knees, lift the thighs. Also lift the hip bones. Close your eyes and try not to move here. Send that same command. The toes are still flaring up. Send that command from the brain to your body. You actually cannot move. Try to stop that little kind of shifting of the weight from one leg to the other. Can you feel that? Mm -hmm. Then send this, the message of stability, of rooting, and that will need, I mean, you will need to recruit your buttocks, clench your buttocks, clench your outer hips in. And then open your eyes and you can come back down to the yoga mat. Do just one very simple tadasana in your yoga mat and feel, oh, now, the, because of the vast extension of the yoga mat, feel, or maybe you don't feel anything at all, and if you don't, it's fine, ignore it, but it's almost like the body collapses a little because we are, ah, comfortable on that whole ground, but if we change the environment, everything is like, oh, I really need to catch here, I really need to suck up and maintain the balance, but in here, it's like, I get into my comfort zone. So try to go against that, grip everything in, imagine that you're still balancing on the platforms, and from here, open the arms out into that T-shape, turn the palms, turn the elbows, turn the shoulders, and then lift your arms up into Urvastasana. So when you're doing that, from the waist up, you lie it as a feather, but keep the extension, and from the um, waist down, you root it. So imagine you're still on those um, bricks. Lengthen the spine, lengthen the sides of the body, roll the shoulders down so you're not losing your neck, but root yourself and try again, try not to move. Try to gain total stability for your feet, for your legs. And then bring your arms down and we'll do um, 
brings us an announcement. So I know that many of us need a little bit of support when you do three posts. We, we will do it so that it's like um, a fake trip. <laughs> so we we'll just do that, yes? To, to mobilize the hips. But make sure you're still trying to gather the two legs to the center line. So instead of leaving that gap, trying to bring the bones of the lower legs, the bones of the upper legs to the center line. So you will be um, getting more um, uh, lift in the body. From here, bend and turn the right leg out and then just shift the balance and come up to the center. Shift to the right. This is like a mini version of warrior two. <laughs> Grip because this is going to be your stopper. Grip the outer hip. And now we will add the lifting of the foot. So when you come up, lift the foot slightly and stop when you reach the middle line. So you really have to lift and suck up from the outer left hip. Now when we go like a puppet, you pull from a string on the knee and lift that knee a little higher and then come down. A little higher and then come down. If you feel any cracking or clicking, it's fine. We're just taking the knee higher than it's supposed to go. And now last of all, can we do that kick? Come back, do that kick. Come back. Okay. Now, come back to Tadasana. And we will do one triples uh, very quickly, and then those of us who can or want to will try it on the grip. So bend and turn the right. We're gripping the outer hips in. The thigh is rolling from the inside out, and then lift and lift and lift and lift. If you need to catch, catch with your hand over the belt. Stay there, you can bring your hands in prayer position, but align the left leg to the middle line. Align the left leg to the middle line. And from here, open the arms, close your eyes. If you want, you can close your eyes, otherwise stay trying to hold it. Lift your arms up above your head. Lie from the waist up. 
Move it from the waist down. Well done. And now touch base. Well done. So the beginning was like unfamiliar surface. Many of the people who are in this room, Masia, has been they have been doing it for um, the week. So um, take the left. Oh no, we will do it without the, the knife, without the blocks first, with the, to the left side. So bend and turn, and let's do that shifting of the balance, and it's coming back. Gripping, so that is your break, your ABS, is it the ABS from the car? Mm -hmm. One uh, for each wheel, so one for each leg. You need to grip it and stop it. Grip it. Otherwise, we, we, if we allow the hip to uh, go loose, we will probably end up in the garden. Mm -hmm. Now, can we lift the foot off? Lift the foot, keep the stability in the right, lift the foot. For many of us who are right handed, this will be the most dominant leg, so there will be more stability in this one. Now, can we lift it higher? And stop, go down, higher, and stop, go down, higher. And last can we kick? Lengthen the tailbone down, kick, and come back. Let the tailbone down, lift the chest, maintain the two sides of the body, evenly um, facing the front. And then come back, and let's do a brief version of uh, brick shasana. Turn, lift, turn the thigh from the inner groin to the outer knee, and if you can, bring the leg all the way up. Those of you who are holding, keep, keep holding it. Those of you who can bring the arms up. And then if you can, you can even take the arms over there. Lengthen and open. Open up. Lift your arms, lighten yourself up from the trunk to the leaves and root the roots. And then come back down. Let's see. Everyone is super stable. So there's not going to be like a before and after. But let's try. We can keep the foot by the ankle or by the shin. And that's fine. If you feel more stable here, that's also fine. But open the foot and the leg, the thigh. Grip the two of the hips. Lift yourself up and then bend and turn the left. Keep sliding it along the right. See if you can bring it higher and higher. A little higher. Catch the foot and hold. I think I, I jinxed it. <laughs> <laughs> open the leg, open the arms, and lift into a tree. More stable. Bring yourself down with the arms with the leg and waist. Okay. Um, another of our balancing poses. We've, we've been doing this also online, so we, we should be able to balance pretty easily now. Um, anyone with knee or lower spine problems, you can do Narudasana with the buttocks against the wall and change legs um, from one to the other but uh, supported by the wall. The rest of us will pretend that the wall is behind us and that the ceiling is just very low so you cannot bounce up and then you know like dancing some kind of you're starting to dance. This is Sit on an imaginary chair, stay down and cross, stay down and cross. Imagine that you are dancing tango. You know there is that move of tango where the leg ends up on a man's um, bum. 
Before, in the olden days, men only were allowed to dance tango. So this was a very female, male uh, anyway. Let's do this, whenever you're ready. Start trying to do it so that you can hook and hook. You know, this is Garuda Sanat. Do you remember that? Yes. Go down and stay down. Bend your knees more. Caroline, are your knees or rise on this? <laughs> Lift the chest. Well done. Okay. Now, let's go back to stand on those bricks with the legs hip width and sit on an imaginary chair. So the legs are bent, we're not lifting the legs up. We're not lowering the torso, but we are going to do the arms. So right arm over the left. And then cross again. Cross again so that the thumbs are facing you. Everything is aligned and the tips of the elbows and the two palms are facing the front. Now from here, send the weight back to the heels and push the shins back. Lift the elbows. Imagine that the elbows are lifting your pubic bone up. So from the elbows you're also lifting the pubic bone. And then take your thumbs further away from your face and roll the shoulders down and separate your trapezius. Flatten the palms against one another and then inhale and come back up to standing. That should feel like a release for the trapezius and for the shoulder muscles. If it is too much for the shoulders, just don't do it. Because it's all awesome, just stay there. Yeah? Let's bend again. Send the shins back. You know, like when you're going to ski. Send the shins back, weight on the heels, but sit on a chair. Open the arms and now the left coming over the right. Left cross again. The palms are not going to be exactly together, but you want them almost together. Grip the wrists into one another. See that the wrists are not bending and doing funny things. Then, from the elbows, lift your pubic bone. So when you lift the elbows away from your chest, lift the pubic bone as well. And roll the shoulders down. And move the forearms and thumbs away from you. Where would you find the focal point if you had to fix your gaze? The focal point cannot be your hands because they are obviously going to be moving. So find the focal point and then breathe. Great. All we have to do now is or you cannot, um, you, 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 you can do it without the bricks, this is what I'm going to say. You don't have to uh, have the bricks under your feet, but if you want to try it once without arms and see how stable do I feel, and then the other side, how stable do I feel, so we've got some kind of idea of where we're going once we do the whole asana. So if you prefer to stay safe, on the safe ground, you do it from the ground. Otherwise, try once. I mean, the least, that, I mean, the worst that can happen is before. But we are also training the brain, as we were saying a few weeks back, to do all these kind of weird moves. At some point, we may go back to wearing high heels. <laughs> um, we don't really want to be straining or, you know, just um, doing funny, funny moves with the ankles, especially, or the knees, where the brain doesn't really know what's going on. So we are training to create that muscle memory. So if a little accident happens, hopefully we won't, but if anything happens, we're cycling or we just step on some kind of uneven ground, and then the ankles go, or the knees go, uh, or you're ice skating, 
with a 73-year-old woman tagging along. Um, Sue is teaching, um, uh, Sue is teaching uh, ice skating figures to a grandma who wants to go and skate with her grandchild. <laughs> and um, for the first time, that's, how cool is that? Right. That's very brave of Sue as well to take up a student. Um, yes. So, <laughs> do you have a show now? Um, bend to our knees and sh uh, sit on that chair, shins back, shins back, press on the heels, and we're going to cross the left leg over the right, deeply cross, cross at the thigh level, cross at the inner groin level, and then if you can cross twice, cross twice, otherwise stay crossing on once, and lengthen the arch and the toes of the, of the left foot. Love. Okay, pass the test. <laughs> over to the other brick. So the right foot coming over to the left, uh, deeply cross, cross from the inner groin, and then creep the inner groins together, and one more little whiplash there. Shins back, weight on the heels. Can you actually see the stability? We have so much more stability on high heels than on the ground, for many of us, anyway. So now let's add the arms, because we are on the victory lane. <laughs> Sit on a chair, shins back, heels are pressing strongly, and prepare your arms. I would suggest having them already like a goal post, and then shift the weight to the right, cross, cross again if you can, and then left elbow over the right. Left elbow over the right. Remember that um, focal point. Extend the elbows up and away from your body and lift the pubic bone as you do that. So sit on the right heel. Lengthen the thumbs away. Well done. I was just about to say, come away. <laughs> well done, everybody. Now, second side. Sit on that imaginary chair. Shins back, weight back, shift the weight, prepare your arms, and so right leg over left, one more time. And then left arm over the right, and cross and cross. Flatten the wrists, flatten the wrists. Lift the thumbs and bring them away from your body. Find your focal point. Grip your inner groins together. And then... Well done. Good. Okay, so let's do... Uh, downward dog. First of all, with the hands on the bricks, and then we'll swap over, and we have the heels on the So, attach the heels of the hands to the corners of the brick. If your bricks are sliding because your yoga mat is a bit more slippery, do that. So the heels of the hands are on the mat and the brick is underneath. So press strongly with your hands and then turn your toes under, lift your knees, your hips and push from the heels of the hands. Turn your arms from the inside out. Turn your arms. Turn your elbows in. Squeeze your elbows. Mm -hmm. Out your elbows in. And separate your legs a tiny bit more. That's it. Lengthen the spine and take the center of your spine towards the legs. And then from here, can you send the shins back and the heels more down? It doesn't matter if the knees don't reach the ground, but you want to just take them down. Take the knees down, take the shins back. Open the back of the knees, lengthen the arms, and then come back down onto your hands and knees, and turn around, simply turn around. Sarah, if you prefer to repeat this one, because it's going to be more intense on the shoulders uh, to load um, the feet uh, 
find it on their hands. But try. Um, make sure that when you come up, only the heels are on your clothes. So I would suggest starting half a foot away from the bricks so that when you come on to them, it's just the tip of your heels because then you will lift the foot, uh, I mean lift the feet and the soles up and keep just the heel on the block. So come up into downward dog, attach your heels to the corners of the blocks and take a look at your uh, front ankles from there and move the front ankles back and nail the heels on the blocks. Lift the knees, lift the thighs and then can you push the hands down strongly and lift the soles of the feet away from the yoga mat. Lift the soles and take your heels more strongly down. Lift the toes towards your shins. Can you touch your shins with your toes? Mm. Open the back of the knees. Open the back of the knees. Take the outer corners of your knees more towards this, this end of the room. And push the hands to get a better opening of the creases of your buttocks and of the back of the thighs. Push your hands more. Lengthen the shoulders, last of all, relax your head. Relax your head, relax your neck. The crown of the head should be facing down to the mat. That's it. Right. Come back down to your hands and knees. We will do a little bit of um, arm and leg balance now. So, let me show you how it goes. So instead of coming into downward dog uh, with the legs wide, we will have the legs further away from the hands than before, but the legs together. So, two hands on the bricks, two feet together, and as I am starting, I have my knees beyond the hips, not just under the hips. So, when I turn the toes under, I come up, and then it's easy for me to come into that plank. First, we will do that movement five times. Five times coming up and down, up and down. Anyone with wrist pain can stay with the hands out and the fingers down so we kind of create an angle there. So lifting and shifting and then we'll stay here and the whole body will be a straight line and then we'll start lifting from the inner groin and down. In a groin and down. When we lift, we don't want to come up into the whole dog or we don't want to bend the leg. So really a long leg. Even if it is just a micro movement, you don't have to open it up at the right angle. Just a little bit, it will be uh, making the buttocks work and it will be making the inner thighs work a lot. Let's first oil the hinges of the shoulders and the ankles. So, heels of the hands on the bricks and then make your um, knees come a tiny bit further away than the hips. From here, uh, bring your two feet together and turn the toes under, getting ready to come to a downward facing dog, but with the legs together. Grip the hips of if you still we're standing on the platforms with your Tadasana. Move the body weight forward so that your shoulders are coming a bit more forward than your um, wrists. And back again to dog and up again and down and forwards and back and forwards and back and forwards and a stay forward in that kind of Plank position where my whole body is one straight line. Activate the inner groin of the right leg and kick up from there. So use your abdomen, lower your buttocks a tiny bit more back here. Can you? Yes. Now, lift the leg and drop it down gently. Lift the other leg and drop it down gently. Ruth, you can bring your feet together, it's easier. With the feet, yes. Lift the other leg, I completely forgot which one it is. Left, left and right, left and right, and then take a break, bring your knees to the ground, and you can do chat.
jumps follows the rest of your wrists, or you can stay kneeling. Open the chest though, and 
and turn the hips, turn the torso, turn the shoulders, grip the left buttock forward, bend that leg. Safely come back down with both your hands and then shuffle that left foot back and we roll back into that plank. Inhale and push into the old dog, hands onto the bricks, take the heels back and down, open the back of the knees, lengthen your arms. And now again, come to that plank. Right, I completely forgot which leg we're lifting now. Right, so right. right leg, lift your right leg, whoops, lift your right leg, turn on to the outer side of the left foot. You are balancing with only one leg and one hand and lifting the other leg away from the standing leg. Now, three goes and kick your leg. Now, come forward with a big step into that little position so that your right foot is next to the brick. If you need to readjust that brick, that's the time. And now step in with your left leg, straighten the left leg, and lift up into Arna Chandrasana, half moon pose. Now we are facing the left or the door. Grip the, left, the right button forward. Grip the right button forward, open the chest to the chin. Can you lift that standing, the, the raised leg up a little more? Lift that raised leg up. Extend the heel away, extend the heel away, extend the heel away. Bend the knee and come back to that little position, two hands on the bricks. Step back and child's pose. I know. <laughs> I felt how much easier today than yesterday, which is surprising because I feel shit today. Uh, yes, probably because you are in the room, there's something going on when you are doing it with other people, I suppose. Um, I suppose the energy of everyone trying to make it, <laughs> you know, trying to hold it together, also has an impact. I, I think that's my interpretation. That's what happens to me as well. If I am in class doing it with other people, it feels like we're sharing the load kind of thing. <laughs> Right, when you have recovered, come back up. Okay, now we are going to do another one of these. You know how we have just done this Arda Chandrasana going down? We are all going to go into the opposite direction, but because that is quite a tricky pose, we will take the foot to the wall and then two bricks down. So it may well be that we have to turn the mats a lot. Of course you are allowed to use this wall, any wall, you only just need the width of your mat and no more than that. Let me show you and then we'll do it all together. So the first thing to do is of course measure so that you're not going to uh, need extra space. We'll go down. Those of us with um, more flexibility in the hamstrings can go even down to the floor. I will show you with the bricks, then we will lift the right leg up and I want to turn to the side whose leg is standing. So if I am lifting the right leg, I will be lifting the left arm. I'm twisting, so I am still doing that Karita or the sorry, the, the half moon pose, but instead of doing it like we've just done, we are doing it in the reverse position. And I have that little piece of support just again to root me out, and then I can worry about lifting off the chest. Otherwise, if we do it free range, what tends to happen is I'll show you from the side. What tends to happen is I go and I'm stuck here. So the body doesn't go, this leg falls, and it's, it's not a complete open um, half moon pose. Yeah? Let's try it. So shift around a 
move so that you have a little bit of support. If so, if you want to try it on the radiator, you can also put the big bow on the radiator. It's, it's not on, or on the windowsill. Hopefully it's not, is it? <laughs> In the church hall yesterday, the, the heating was on. <laughs> the heating was on at 7 p.m. Right. Whenever you're ready, just take your measurement. So bring your hands down to the bricks and I'm too far away. Come closer to the wall so that you will have an L shape or right angle, the one leg to the other. You will be able to uh, lift your right leg up to um, the same level as your hip. Great. Now, once you know the measures, don't move your legs, that's the correct distance. Address the hands, and if you need toilet bricks, you can even have blocks under the bricks. Um, put the bricks down, whatever height you need, and then bring yourself down in Uttanasana. So the hands are on the bricks or on the floor, as wide as your shoulders, you're opening your chest, look into the middle of the room, lift your chest up, and then grip your hips. Let us all imagine for a moment that we are standing on those bricks. So there is a narrow surface on which to balance. Now, just release the right leg out to the toes, and then lift from the inner groin until you find the wall behind you. Make sure you can only see the big toe. If you can't see the thigh, it's because the leg is still too low. So, so you could hook it. Could you hook the foot, the, the big toe, on the radiator? If you want, yes, there you go. Extend the two legs. Now, roll the outer thigh of the right leg down. Outer hip down. And lift the left hip up. That's nice. Now, because we have lifted the right leg, can we move the body to the right? Sorry, to the left. And <clears throat> lift the left arm. Lift the left arm. The left arm, if the shoulder is hurting, you can keep the hand on the sacrum. Otherwise, try and reach the ceiling with your left arm. Open the chest. Lengthen the head at the same level with your spine. That's it, that's it. Push the wall away. Are you okay, Anna? Yeah, I just get pain across the Like sciatic pain or? It's like a sciatic pain. All right, okay. Just go back into a wide Uttanasana. All right, come back down. Bring your two legs down. Don't move the feet at the correct distance and come up into Tadasana. All right. Um, if you experience discomfort in the lumbar spine when you are doing the twist, chances are that we're not extending the tailbone as far back as it should. So use that push of the wall to lengthen the tailbone, lengthen that side of the sacrum, and then start turning. Don't start turning until you have lifted your abdomen and then lengthen the tailbone back. So we've got more of an extension before we start scrunching up or, or turning. Let's do that again to the other side. So have the two bricks on the floor, have the hands on the bricks, and now this time we're lifting the left foot and we'll be turning to the right. So when you're ready, bring your foot up to the wall from the inner thigh and lengthen that leg. Push the wall, push into the wall. Take your buttock of the raised leg down. The buttock of the raised leg needs to go down, 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 down. And push the wall more, open the back of that knee. Now, because we are turning to the right, lift your right arm and place the hand on the sacrum first. Use that hand to iron the sacrum and the tailbone down to the heels or to the heel of the raised leg. Then turn your body. Turn the body to the right. Turn the body more. If you can, free up the 
shoulder, lift the arm up. Lift and roll the shoulder back and down. Lift, press the wall. Press the wall with your foot and lift the arm away from your armpit. This one to the wall. Lift your head. That's it. Come back down. Bring the turn down, bring the leg down and have a rest. You okay? Yeah. Ruth, you only have to cycle all the way back home. <laughs> Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> and you get all the fresh air from uh, Grange Park? Great. Okay. So, we are now going to dummy to Shishasana. Are we all doing Shishasana today? Let's dance. Shivasana? Uh, <laughs> Did you like that? <laughs> if you can do a, a break, like an interval at the, at the theatre. Shavasana interval, some ice cream, and then we can go. <laughs> um, let's, let, well, if you weren't too tired, no? carry on, and then you can, can you have a nap after you come back? No, it should be work. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, you can blame me. <laughs> we'll do Shavasana now. Even if you're doing it against the wall, I'd like for you to do Garudasana. So, Narudasana, what, we, what we've been doing earlier today, bending the legs, crossing, and then crossing again. Extending the top leg up, and then uh, pressing your elbows down. Then you extend again, and swap. Lengthen, lengthen the hip bones to the elbows. So hip bones come down to the elbows, buttock bones to the heels. And then stay in the vertical position and come down as you move. If you prefer, if you haven't been practicing for a long time, if you prefer to stay vertical and not do variations, that's fine. Sarah, if you want to do Sutta Parapana, I'm just going to do a short one. Yes, okay. I'm not going to hold it for a while. Yeah. My neck's also, like, I think I slept with my neck's really nice today, so I don't want to put too much. All right. Would you like to, would you like to do elbow stand instead or a handstand instead? So that will not affect your neck. Do I have to do garadasana if I do a shoulder? No, I don't want to do an elbow stand. <laughs> not at all. No, you don't have to do that. <laughs> so elbow stand. If you want, you can place a belt around your. There's a belt there. Yes. I see that you have all. Green, um, what's that? Te teal? Yeah, I know that's pretty nice. Sarah, so bring your waist towards me and lift the hips, uh, the sitting bones up. Sitting, yes. Push the shoulders up. And whenever you're ready, you can come into Garudasana, Sarah. Bend the knee, bend the knee, bend the two knees. Yes. Whoops. The, the balancing point changes. Nice. Now, Ruth, bring the two knees to the middle line. Bring the inner groins together and lengthen the sitting bones. I think that um, belt is a little bit too tight. Well done, so. Can we do the classical version but with the buttocks off the wall? Yes, and now one foot. I should have closed the window before. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Open your legs. Squeeze the brick. I'm going to leave that brick there. Come away from the wall. Squeeze the brick. Squeeze the brick and don't let go. Lift the shoulders. Lift the shoulders. Lift the shoulders. Grip your buttocks. How is that? Woo! Woo!
Okay, here we go. Tippy toes, tippy. Yes, yes, yes. You can move it. Move the weight to the finger knuckles. Yeah. So the wrist feel lighter. And regulate slightly towards Caroline. A little bit more. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. And those of you who want to come down, release your head and neck in whatever position. Are you okay, Anne? Well, great. How does it feel? So, you need to start practicing with some kind of something, such as, for example, if you, if you wrap a belt around one of the legs, you know it's not going to cost anything because I'm just putting it there. You can put a stop around it, anything that we anything that we make some kind of obstacle so that first you come up, the usual way you come up, and then you know you've got that belt. You know you've got to squeeze it. Or do what Sarah was doing a moment ago. Here's the leg where you have the obstacle. So bring it away from the wall. Bring your buttocks away from the wall and then squeeze. Once you squeeze, extend. And the same happens when you have to do a hamster. You, you've got to imagine that the two legs are one. And that's the same concept we had earlier today when we were on this. So the body is sucking in towards the center. So what Mr. Yenga would say is from the periphery to the core. And then from the core to the periphery. When we are beginners, we start from the periphery to the core because what we want is to move. You know, the subtleties will come later. I don't care about the subtleties. I just want to do the downward dog thing. I just want to be upside down. Then you start, you know, kind of polishing. You don't start driving an F1 car. You start driving a very old car and crash and start learning how to park and then the subtleties. It's the same with the body. And the same with the understanding. Sometimes, sometimes they, because we have slept funny or because we, whatever happens uh, in, in life outside yoga, the, the brain doesn't respond the way that it would um, any other day. It's like sometimes I can do a flip back and sometimes I am like still so wrong. Kind of, what's going on? It's just lots of, lots of other factors have an impact on our body. But if we know how to move, then it will come. It's like, yeah, riding a uh, bicycle or, or driving the car. Where are we? Okay, Prasarita Paratanasana. We'll do Prasarita Paratanasana just to release the neck. You can do it with a, your, your head reaches the ground, doesn't it? No? So do this with the belt. How, how far away from the ground are you? No, I'm it's getting into it. Day by day. No, it's only about half an hour. Okay. Okay, let's do the break. So we can have a break, or we can have a belt, or we can have whatever you need. The two feet, I like to align my two heels to the edge of the mat so that uh, I know that one hip is not going forward, etc. So what we are going to do the right hand to the left elbow and the left hand to the right elbow and then descend. When we descend, we'll, we'll spend some time. You can also in the garden if you want. Um, uh, we'll spend some time here with the concave back and then immediately after we'll descend so that the crown of the head is going down. If the head doesn't touch the ground, we will have a brick.
Now, cross your right hand and catch your left elbow and then the other hand to the other elbow. Lift the chest and move the spine away from your forearms. So you are lifting the chest already. Move the spine away from your forearms, lengthen the tailbone down and start folding. Fold until your body is parallel to the floor. But keep the toes lifted and keep the thighs gripping in. Send the buttocks a little bit more forward. A little bit more forward. Otherwise you will be too far away from the blocks. When you're ready, release your head down. Release your head down. down to the ground. Pull up the knees. Pull up the knees. So lift your head a little. Move your feet slightly back. The feet of the buttocks. Yes. And now move the buttocks forward and take your head down. I think you could do. With a level of the Now the crown of the head. Yes. You see? Pull up the knees on the floor. Grip the outer hips in. Grip the outer hips in. So, from here. Inhale and come back halfway through. So your body is again parallel to the floor. Lengthen the tailbone back and release your arms. Stretch them back. Roll the shoulders towards the tip of the fingers. And now the left hand is going to catch the right elbow and vice versa. One more time, go down. One more time, descend your head. You may notice that this time around you have low your neck. Under the brick and then 
and change the interlock. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what we are doing now. You don't have to have the wall if you want to lower the legs. There the will be more release for the uh, lumbar spine if you do have that wall. Even though they are almost touching. 
push back the knee. Heels away from the wall. Toes away from the wall. Can you hover the legs there? Matthew, without touching. Yes. Yes. We are balancing after all. The shoulders should go down. Thank you very much. And then bend your legs. Bring your feet safely down to the floor. Lift your buttocks up. Remove the bricks. And then lengthen the table to the wall to come down again. Take a moment. And whenever you're ready, roll over on the right. And so because we have been working with the wall, we will leave the mat exactly where they are. I'll show you very quickly what we're doing, and then we'll do it. So, I want us to sit a tiny bit more now. It's all about counteracting all these feelings of balancing and again feeling ground. So, you will take your buttons all the way, the hip all the way to the wall, so that then we swing the legs up and really creep, creep, creep until we can find the skirting board with the buttons. The legs will stay here for a moment and the arms will go over the head. So first of all, I will try to place my hands down. If this is not possible because of stiff shoulders, put the bricks under your hands and then place the, the back of the palms on top of the bricks. From here, we will come to a bending of the legs position, but still the buttocks want to touch the wall. And then we will take a walk to the right, or to the left and try to steer so that we can keep that other shoulder on the ground and with that hand, the opposite hand, you compact yourself. So we are lengthening the sacrum, the spine, the lumbar, etc. And then walk over to the other side and compact yourself. That's a very nice massage for the lumbar spine and a nice stretch of the outer side of the hip and leg. Sciatic nerves are ever so happy when we do these actions, yeah? So try and compact yourself. The secret is to get as close to the wall as we can. See if you can, um, Sarah, see if you can walk over to the sides because then it will be, you can come here as well. Can you walk to the sides with the, oh, there okay. Yeah. Mm. Yes, or maybe put the bricks there. Yeah. I will, I will give you my other bricks to make a larger wall. Then the other side, yeah. Okay, first of all, try to squeeze in the world close to it as possible so your buttocks are already. Um, brushing against the skirting board. Then, from here, lift your arms over your head and try to take your hands to the floor, the back of the hands to the floor. Extend the elbows too. Extend the elbows, extend the arms, extend the elbows, lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. And I adjust. Yeah. Length. And then take the wrist down. Waist goes on the floor. Can you keep it there? Yes. And it's a stiff shoulder. It's a stiff shoulder, yes. I can it's getting it up to That's nice. Can you keep it there, Matthew? Yeah. Oh, and the fingers. Oh, and the hands. This one's a stiff right. Bring the elbow down. Yes. Now try to take the shoulder blades away from the floor. 
shoulder blades away from the floor. So you're lifting the chest, lengthening your arms. Send the tailbone to the wall and your arms to the center of the wall. The back of the head as well, to the center of the wall. And I think they would be interesting. Absolutely. That was the stiff shoulder, isn't it? Yeah. Which one? This. This one. Back to the wall and lengthen the arm. Yes. Open a little bit more this one. Yes. I know, I can feel the resistance. Yes. Doesn't want to come yeah. to me. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, now from here. Keep that extension and bring the two legs to your chest. So slide the heels until the soles of the feet are really close to your buttocks and on the wall. Roll the thighs in to keep the legs as close together as they can. And now take a walk to the right side and take the two legs over. Maybe what will happen is that your left butter wants to leave the wall. But it's your job to take that left butter all the way there again. Now, with your left hand, that's all, with your right hand, catch the top knee and don't let go. So, with your right hand, catch the top knee, basic, and you carry and walking your feet until they are touched. The outer edge of your right foot can be touching the floor. So, walk and walk and walk, turn your body. Yes! Now, push your left butter to the wall. Left butter, which is your top butter, to the wall. And lengthen your left arm. Up over your head. If you have the room to open it out, open it out to the left and stretch. Take your shoulder blade. Take your arm here. There. And now down to the floor. Down to the floor. Carry on taking your left buttons to the wall. That's it. Relax your neck. Relax your gaze. And then release your legs and walk back up all the way. <laughs> and then over to the other side. Look, there's that electric socket there. So if, you, if you're touching, and, and so you also have that kind of electric socket. Walk your legs all the way. Walk your feet so that the outer side of your left foot is all the way to the front. Bring your knees up. Bring your knees to your chest. Into a compacted pose. <laughs> Lovely. Now, with your left hand, catch it to me and push it down. And now the left button wants to go on touch the wall. The right button wants to go on touch the wall. The top button is going to the wall. And walk your feet over to the first wall. Yes. 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 Yeah, it doesn't matter. I mean, they won't. 
can go, they will be touched, and you want that stretch in your brain. Can you feel it and then stretch it like that? If you can open the right arm out to the side and stretch the shoulder blade from the center of your spine to the fingernails. From the center of the spine to the fingernails. See if you can take that right back shoulder to the floor. And release your abdomen, send the right vertebra to the wall, more and more and more. So the outer right hip is making sure that the two legs are aligned, the two knees are aligned. And then walk yourselves back up, release the legs. How do we untangle from here? We don't. <laughs> we stay here for a little longer. Anyone whose hands feet are not comfortable, let me know and I'll give you a break to put under your buttocks. But I suppose everyone's fine. So stay there with your legs a little bit up, high and high. Turn them a tiny bit more to the wedding lows. Yes, that's it. Extend the heels up. Try to relax. And again, lift your arms up over your head. See if there is any kind of difference now. See if the spine can completely flatten on the, on the mat. The waist broadens, the back of the shoulders broaden. Great. And now open the arms out to the sides. And if you don't have enough room, bend the elbows like a, like a goal pose. That's it. Lift the chest. Scoop the shoulder blades into the back, away from the mat, and reach the sky with your heart. Open the chest. Relax the facial muscles. Relax the tongue in your mouth. The joints of the jaw. And we will stay here. Either with the legs bent or simply cross your legs. So bend your knees, cross your legs, just like when we started class. But now you will have the support of the wall to catch your outer ankles. If that is too uncomfortable, you can have the legs in Baddha Konasana, feet together, knees apart. Or simply stay with the legs straight against the wall. So turn the palms to face the ceiling. the stomach, the muscles around it, the hips, the muscles around it. When you are practicing a pose in yoga, can you find a delicate balance between taking the pose to its maximum extent and taking it beyond that point so that there is too much effort 
creating wrong tensions in the body. When you are always stretching somewhere to get the optimum movement, have you ever noticed that you're also giving too little attention to other parts of the body? That disturbs the body and makes it shake. If the root of a tree is weak, the tree itself cannot be strong. Suppose you're doing a head balance. What happens if you stretch your legs in order to get a good pose and let your neck muscles become loose? Or if your elbows do not grip the floor, so the fear comes that you're falling or swaying from side to side. Because the strong muscles try to control the pose, the weak muscles give way. When doing the pose, therefore, you have to maintain a single stretch from the floor to the top without letting any part drop. When you're stretching the legs, you have to send an alarm signal to your arms. I am stretching your legs, so don't lose your attention. That is awareness, because we lose our awareness and our attention is partial, we don't know whether we are holding the grip or not. You can lose the benefits of what you are doing because of focusing too much partial attention on trying to perfect the pose. What are you focusing on? You're trying to perfect the pose, but from where to where? That is where things become difficult. Focusing on one point is concentration. Focusing on all points at the same time is meditation. Meditation is centrifugal as well as centripetal. In concentration, you want to focus on one point, and the other points lose their potential. But if you spread the concentration from the extended part to all the other parts of the body, without losing the concentration on the extended part, then you will not lose the inner action or the outer expression of the pose. And that teaches you what meditation is. Concentration has a point of focus. Meditation has no points. That is the secret. Okay, now we're gently bend your legs and bring the knees together. And again, make sure you have no props on the right side so you can take the walk with your feet all the way, staying held up. Over to the right, hold your head with your right hand.
nice relaxation to get you ready to cycle back home. Oh. And um, I didn't see each other this week. 